to the uh, Eastern Mass Zoning Board, of, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Today is Tuesday, October 24th. I'm Ryan Cook, I'm the chair. Um, on tonight's first hearing, uh, we're gonna have um, Mr. McCall, all the way to my far right. Um, we will also have Mr. Curran uh, to his immediate left. Uh, Mr. K has recused himself. Uh, so we'll have uh, Mr. Handberger on my immediate left. And our newest member, Ms. Rummel, uh, no stranger to zoning boards of appeals, though. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and then myself, so that'll be our board tonight. Um, Mr. Paul, do you want to read the, uh, our first Absolutely. item in, please? Eastern Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October 24th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. at the Eastern Town Hall. Colleen Corona Boardroom, 136 Elm Street, Easton, Massachusetts, on the following petition. Special permit, Gen 3 RE LLC for property located 785 Washington Street, Easton. Assessor's map 40U, lot 2A, for a special permit pursuant to Easton Code Book, Chapter 235, Zoning, Section 235-56 and 235-24, I mean 14 and 235 Appendix A1, Table Use of regula Regulations H, Subsection 6, Applicant Seeks Permission to Allow a Dog Kennel Business. This notice is also available at masspublicnotices.org. I'm going to read the boards and their following comments. DPW and Police Department not applicable. Board of Health incomplete with the following comment. Our records show the current septic design is for 300 gallons per day. How many kennels do you plan on having? The current septic system can only support six kennels at 50 gallons per day. The current septic system is from 1969. Environmental planner, not applicable. They did leave a comment. Is there a plan for animal waste? Owners should confirm they understand requirements under a stormwater program and operation and maintenance plan per conservation. History, historical commission of affordable housing, not, no comment. Building department, Recommended planning and zoning board gave an incomplete with the following comment October 2nd 2023 the planning and zoning board discussed the special permit application submitted for 785 Washington Street and voted unanimously to provide no comment as sufficient information to weigh the merits of the proposed use was not provided Fantastic. Well. Thank you. Uh, is the applicant here? <coughs> yes, sir. You ready, sir? Sure. Um, just a couple of comments. I'm, I'm assuming most of the folks here are for this hearing in particular. Um, so the applicant is going to have the chance to make their comments and present their case. Um, once they have, uh, the board may ask a couple of minor questions just for clarification during that. Once they have finished their presentation, it will be open for public comment. So we just ask to please uh, be respectful to the applicant uh, while they are making their presentation. You will have plenty of time uh, to have uh, the ability to make comments. All right, sir. You absolutely can. <laughs> it ends up being the same on both screens. Members of the board, uh, my name is Frederick Casman. I'm an attorney that represents the applicant. Um, a representative from the applicant is here, Pat Fallen, uh, as well as with the tenant who's the business owner, um, Bob Cataggio, for a classic canines LLC. And uh, Mr. Farrier is our engineer who put the plans together. So the applicant uh, is seeking a special permit for a uh, dog kennel use uh, at 70. Uh, 785 Washington Street. They're currently operating out of 79 Washington Street right next door, uh, which is also um, owned by Mr. Fallen. Uh, the proposal uh, will be a business hours of 6, to, 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Uh, they're currently, and that's Sunday through Saturday, they're currently operating 6.30 to 7. So it'll be an hour earlier on each end. Uh, there are a few possibility for late pickups. Um, it's 
very it is rare a couple times a week so they would like the uh, ability to do that as well it's usually by appointment again three to four times a week they might have someone who is running late and needs to have a late pickup uh, employees there'll be approximately 30 employees 12 to 15 there at any given time um, the amount of um, animals they're seeking um, 200 dogs during the daycare and grooming activity 50 to 60 of those would be in the outside play area I guess the best way to describe it uh, and they would be seeking of those animals 75 to be allowed to be um, boarded or to stay overnight the it suggested the board sort of the legal argument we submitted a memo um, to the board um, again they've been operating since 2006 with a slight amendment in 2007 um, where they allowed 25 overnight animals some boarding animals so that was the change I believe you were uh, mr. chairman were um, discussing with Suzanne so that was in 07 uh, so they've been operating there since for this special permit, I would, would suggest is the proposed use is in harmony with the bylaws. Um, there's several factors, as you well know. Um, I'll, I'll go over them briefly, but they are in my memo, and I, I, you know I can refer to the memo. Um, there's the social, economic, community need. Um, clearly, there's a demand in the town uh, for the doggy daycare, kenneling. Uh, the tenant's business is growing, needs a larger space. Um, I believe there's even one down the street. So there's clearly a demand uh, in the town for this service. Um, traffic flow, safety, including parking and loading, another factor. Uh, this proposed business will be a minimal impact on traffic, safety, parking. The customers drop their pets off. They leave them there for a long period of time. They're not coming and going. You drop them off in the morning, come pick them up at night. Uh, so there's not a big constant flow of vehicles coming in and out of the facility. Uh, the building's about 100 feet away from the road, so you're not going to have any sort of congestion getting in and out of um, the entrances. Uh, and there's plenty, there's adequate parking per the bylaws, uh, which Mr. Ferry can speak to if needed. Uh, the other factor, adequacy of utilities and public services. The only really utility being supplied by the town would be water, and it's more than sufficient. It's, um, it's in a business district, and the, the facilities are perfectly capable of handling um, what this business would use. Uh, the neighborhood character and social structure factor. Um, it's in a business district, which does allow for dog kennels by special permit. Obviously, there's one there now next door. There's another one down the street. Um, so I don't see we, there wouldn't be any adverse effects on the neighborhood. Clearly, the town contemplated allowing these, you know, under a special permit. Uh, any impacts on the natural environment? There's no indication that the dog kennel would have any adverse impact on the natural environment. Um, it, again, it's currently operating. No complaints at 79, 795. Um, and the, the site they're moving to, although they'll be expanding, it's basically the same business. Uh, and then any fiscal impacts, impact on town services, tax base, etc. Uh, the kennel business, again, is currently at 795. They're going to looking to increase the business. Um, so that would generate more you know, revenue for the town, opportunities for people um, to be employed um, uh, by this business. Um, also, I, wanted to, I did want to point out the, um, the applicant, just want to make sure I'm telling, using the right name. They, they work closely with Officer Jordan Holbrook, who is the animal officer in town. And they do supply a service if there's any strays or emergency situations where he needs to put a dog. They do offer that currently to the animal officer and will continue to do that. They'll set up a space for that purpose. Um, so in, to address some of the comments, again, uh, Mr. Farry might be uh, better suited for some of the, the technical ones, but regarding the animal waste comment, um, so the employees monitor the outdoor indoor play areas uh, while they're while the pets are there. The pet waste is collected. Uh, it's placed in a closed, I'm just gonna read from this so I don't say it wrong. Placed in a closed metal container lined with a plastic bag. It's tied, placed into a dumpster, which is emptied at a minimum once per week by a local licensed waste management company. Uh, 
Water usage, and the tenant expects 20 dogs groomed per day, um, you know, of the total dogs in there. Uh, that's about 50 gallons per dog. That'd be about 1,000 gallons. Of, it would be 1,000 gallons. If you're looking at the employees, you get about 15 employees at most in there one time. Even if you say they have 50 gallons a day, which is probably high, that's 750. So you're at 1750. The current septic system per the Title V is uh, designed for 2200. So I think that would be adequate. Um, and I know there was some recent, I just learned about it a little while ago, um, uh, some comments from the neighbors. I believe there's a neighboring condominium. Um, so we, we looked at that. It's about 225 feet when I was on Google Earth. Um, kind of the point of the outside play area would be to the closest point of the, the structure of the condominium. And it was about 220, 230, something in that range. Um, and in between that, it's a heavily wooded area. So I think any concerns of noise um, you know, may be a little misplaced because there is over 200 feet and most of that is heavily wooded. So I don't think there will be any um, noise issues. Um, I think that addresses the comments. Um, I think at this point, if, it, if the Mr. Chair, if you please, I could have Mr. Farry just show you the plans and give you a better idea what it looks like inside and out. Yeah, far away. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, board members, the, the site, as you all know, was the, the former evolution facility. Uh, it received site plan and special permit back in 2011 uh, for parking. Uh, there are 20, 41 spaces on site. We're required to have 28. There's 41. Obviously, we have plenty. Uh, septic system is in working condition as a, 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 a past Title V examination in the front under the parking lot. There's adequate drainage facilities uh, in the back along the, the rear of the building. Uh, there's really no, uh, no changes to the site at all. Most of the, the changes will be inside the building. Uh, the only change to the, to the outside is just uh, the play area on the side where the current turf uh, area is. So that's, uh, that's really all we've got for site issues. Uh, just a, a layout that the proposed uh, facility would, would, uh, would look like uh, breaking up the existing building. That would be the, the outdoor play area again where the turf is. Uh, parking all the way across the front, uh, broken up into the, uh, the facility the way they needed. Small do dogs, large dogs, uh, medium dogs, reception areas, things like that, uh, broken down in this, in this manner. So uh, from our point of view, from an engineering uh, point of view, really no changes, no heavy lifting on our end, just a request for that uh, the special permit as required in the bylaw. Okay. So, I think I'll just leave this one up. Mr. Chair, do you have any questions? I'm, I'm happy to help. Uh, Mr. Farrier is here again. The, the, uh, the property owner and the, the tenant, uh, the business owner, if need be, are happy to get into some of the specifics if you. Okay. Well, I think, you know, at this point, we'll, we'll open it up for public comment. So I'm just going to give some instructions in general. One, uh, be respectful of each other. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are here who want to provide comment. Um, we, are, we want to hear it. Um, if, we're, if I'm hearing the same comments over and over, I'm, I'm going to cut you off just for brevity. You know, if we've already heard it, we're really looking for, um, uh, we don't want to hear the same comments over and over and over because it just make, you know, the hearing uh, last a very long time unnecessarily. Uh, so we want to make sure you all have an opportunity. And if you have comments, please try and make them brief. Uh, rambling statements, um, I, I may cut you off, again, just for brevity. Okay, so when, when you do, yeah, go ahead, Suzanne. I just wanted to say, for ECAC but, um, and for people to hear it live and recorded, with, um, whoever's speaking should use a microphone. Well, that's what I was just going to go and over. And name and address. But, yeah, but thank you. <laughs> so because there are so many folks here and we are, uh, are we broadcasting live on ECAT or is it going to be recorded? Well, regardless, at some point, someone, someone may actually want to watch one of these if they're having trouble sleeping at night. Um, so um, we do have a microphone set up. We would ask that you come up and utilize a microphone. 
speak clearly your name and your address, and then we'll go go forward. So um, I guess we'll take turns. You know, however, however you live. First, first guinea pig. All right, your hands raised. Go right ahead. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, should I just pull this forward? Yeah. Go sure. Ahead. All right, thank Make you. Make sure when you address, you address the chair and not the applicants individually. Certainly, certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> my time By up way, already? Make yeah. sure your phones are on silent. <laughs> uh, my, my name is James Morano. Uh, we own the property at 807 Washington Street, which I believe is adjacent to this property. Uh, 807 Washington Street has five residential apartments there. Uh, the noise. The barking, it's constant, it's incessant. Uh, we have tenants contacting us about the noise. Uh, this, this is for their current location. This is for their current okay. location. Yes. And, and so <clears throat> I wanna, I'll bring that up briefly, but the current noise situation is a problem. Uh, it's, it's ongoing always. We're showing apartments. We have, tenant, we have prospective tenants that walk away because of the noise. Uh, we have our tenants calling because of the noise. We obviously can't do anything about it. We understand that they have a current location. The problem that we have is that <clears throat> if you add what they want to add, it is going to exacerbate the noise problem exponentially. Mm -hmm. And it's going to create an undue burden on us as adjacent property owners trying to run just a five, you know, five, five apartments over there. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. All right, you, sir. Hi, thanks for uh, me speak here. My name is Kevin Fitzgerald. I live at 10 Janet Road um, on the, uh, the other side of the woods that the counselor spoke of that shouldn't be a problem. And I can attest for where Classy Canines is now, that woods does not offer any buffer whatsoever. I'm hearing those dogs every day. And I've also map quested. And that is um, 132 yards yeah. from the back of our building, uh, moving to 66 yards away. And I just have a few comments that I'd like to say here, um, that we absolutely oppose any dog kennel moving into 785 Washington Street. Um, I sent an email to the, um, yourself and the board earlier in the week um, with the uh, help of Suzanne. Thank you, Suzanne. And I went to the three buildings that abut this property, and I have 30 signatures. And most of them are from uh, us residents in those three buildings. There were a couple other people throughout the complexes, 12 bu buildings total, that heard about it and wrote their name down. So 98% uh, are opposed to it. And the reasons are um, that we are already listening to the loud barking from where they're at. Um, Moving the dog kennel closer into a larger building equals even more barking dogs, which will be significantly louder. And uh, per an Eastern real estate office that I spoke to, will absolutely decrease property values and affect real estate comps throughout our complex and most likely other, um, other condos or apartments like the gentleman before me, who I don't know, um, just spoke of. Um, Concessions like hanging noise reduction panels on the fences or limiting number of dogs outside um, simply will not work. And as the counselor said, up to 60 dogs, 60. I, I, mean, I think we can all attest that we've heard one or two neighborhood dogs in our, um, in our life, and it gets pretty annoying. 60 dogs at one time. Um, <clears throat> we deserve our homes to be our sanctuaries, just the same as everyone else. So I implore the, the panel to please really put yourselves in our shoes. We are not anti-classy canines. I personally love dogs, and we're not anti-capitalists. We'd like to see a business go in there, but just not a bunch of barking dogs or anything like that. So I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Tracy DeBro, and I live at 10 well, Janet. Wait till you get to, because we can hear you, but then the public <laughs> okay. listening can't. Hi, I'm listen. Tracy DeBro, and I live at 10 Janet Road as well. Um, tiny bit similar. I live at the end unit, which is actually visibly, I can see the property, Evolution Sports. And when that was actually uh, 
uh, being used. It was a little bit of annoying, especially at this time of year when the leaves are gone. I had floodlights out in the back into my, my living room, my bedroom, um, and it was very quite noisy with children. I can't imagine. I'm actually shocked to hear the number of dogs that's being proposed. So I'm um, in the same boat. I'm, it, I just don't think that's going to... I mean, I get dogs, dogs bark, and unfortunately, I think that's probably why you see a lot of places where they're in more of a... Um, uh, uh, not residential, but uh, what's the word I'm trying to commercial. think? Yeah, commercial area. I mean, I, I, you know, it's I, I sleep with my window open, so a lot of a lot of times I have um, I hear howling that wakes me up, barking. But I also it's also the Folan uh, business itself with the floodlights and you know bedroom the the trucks. So it's the dogs and the trucks for me. But um, sixty dogs, I think, is just I. I oppose that as well and thank you yes ma'am hi i'm kristen ward i live at six janet road so that's just behind uh in front of the 10 janet road um and I can attest that what they said about heavily wooded is really not heavily wooded. I can see right through. Um, it's probably, I would say, five to six rows of trees, like, scattered. It's not heavily wooded. So that is not an argument that I think should be um, considered in this for the noise. It's not going to get rid of any noise. Thank you. Any others? Yes, sir. Um, there's Michael Rausch, 10 Janet. My wait, wait, to, wait till you're up to the Sorry. microphone, please. Michael Rausch, 10 Janet. My question is, is more about point of procedure, how decisions are, are weighed, and uh, what time frame and how are they published? Sure, so that's a great question. So the way this works is um, special permit is, uh, is defined by Mass General Law, uh, Chapter 40A. There is a set standard. Um, and if you, um, if you pull up on the permitized uh, application, you can see uh, applicant's letter. And the attorney did a good job of stepping through the individual elements of the special permit application. Um, so our job is, as the board will be to step through each of those elements of the special permit application, either deny or approve. Um, if that once, once we vote on that, it's a 30-day time period for us to put our decision in writing and present it to the applicant, whether approved or rejected. Um, if it's rejected, the applicant has 20 days to appeal. Um, and uh, that's, that's sort of the process. But thank you for the question. How is the township? Uh, if you have another question so the public can hear. Sure, sorry. That's OK. I'm just wondering how the town um, gets notified of the decision. Uh, so all decisions are available on the uh, Eastern Zoning Board of Appeals uh, website through Permitize. Yes, Suzanne. And the abutters, if you if you are an abutter and you were notified of this meeting, the um, the decision will be mailed to all the abutters. Okay, thank you. And it's also posted. Sure. All right. Okay. okay. Any other comments? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, my name is Pat Folan. I live at uh, 21 Kilsyth Road in Southeastern. I also work at 795 Washington Street, where the current tenant is now. Uh, I just wanted to speak on a, a couple things as far as where the layout is, where the dogs will be. This is a larger building than they're at now. Actually, will help 807 quite a bit because they're going to be further away. Um, also, larger building is going to project probably towards us a lot more. Um, they've been a great partner with us for 16 years in the business. I think. It's good to see them growing the business. I spoke with another business owner that uh, is further up on 138 that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, actually her backyard is right up to an outdoor kennel space. I know there's uh, some concerns about it. Uh, the tenant is actually a great, um, uh, they're great people. Uh, they're gonna do everything they can to help out with this process. Uh, they don't intend to disrupt anybody, but they also wanna um, make a living, and do the best they can in their business. But that's all I want to say. Appreciate it, thank you. Yes, sir. 
Uh, good evening. My name is Michael Carvin. I'm Tangent Road also. And um, to add to something new to the, to the noise issue would be that if we're looking at this map here, Janet Road is off to the right. Mm -hmm. And most of our condos are you know, set back the same amount that that's set back. There's sort of a small stream going through there that's very sparsely wooded. It's heavily wooded to the top of that map, <coughs> like between us and if you were going north on uh, Washington up like Simpson Springs. Mm. But in, be in between us, um, not, not heavily, but behind us very heavily. Also, another thing about the noise is the noise we're getting now is abated somewhat by like four buildings between where Classy K9's quite like. I, I, I like the business. But there are four buildings. There's Classy K9 itself. <clears throat> We're off to the left now. Coming towards us, there's like a two story like maintenance bay garage across from that that also acts as a buffer. Closer to Washington Street, there's a, there's a brick structure. And then there's this huge building itself being a buffer. So depending on, on what angle the, you know, we are on Janet going back towards where the dogs are, there are going to be three buildings between anyone on Janet and where the dogs are now. Putting them here, we're just down to the one building closer and a greater number of dogs. So I, I think the, the noise is going to get to into uh, intolerable is harsh, but um, unacceptable levels for, for a condo. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Anybody else? Can I just add something? Yep. Feel free. So uh, listening to Mr. Fuller and others, this is nothing against um, the owner of Classic Canines. I'm sure he's a wonderful guy. Who wants to hear a bunch of dogs barking every day? I already hear it every day. I invite the whole panel to come to my house and stand outside of my patio or inside with the slider open, where they are now with more woods. I hear it every day. This is a lot closer, more dogs, incessant barking, nonstop. I, I feel for them for their business. They already have an established business. I know that they want to grow. And like the attorney said that, yes, it is technically a commercial zone, but that zone in between residential and commercial, it's an invisible line that Barking dogs just goes right over into our properties. I am telling you, with doors and windows closed, they're closer with more dogs. We're not talking about just when we're like, we have windows or doors open. We will hear it in our homes every day. I hear it inside my home. Now, it's not that bothersome, and I understand that we all need to make some concessions. We listen to you know uh, Mr. Follin's business in the morning. I don't have any complaints. It was there when I bought it. You know, um, Class C canines. I didn't know how loud when I looked at the property until I moved in, which is what the first gentleman spoke of. You can't show residents, but th there is no. I feel like there's no real opinion here. A bunch of barking dogs make a lot of noise, and that's what's going to happen. So I, I empathize with their business. But this is our home. I mean, everybody wants to go home from hard day work or just life and just relax and just, you know, a couple noises outside the home. That's one thing, but not barking dogs every day. And I would ask the, the panel, would you want to live next to a kennel? So please, I, I implore you to really try to put yourself in our shoes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Actually, I do have a question. Ryan to Janet Road. Um, how many dogs are at the current facility? So you need to address Ooh, the chair, sorry. not the applicants. How many dogs are at the current facility um, on a given basis? Well, it's Permit had it listed at 40. So it's 40 or 45. 40, so this is five times the amount? I'm, look, I'm looking at the uh, original special permit. I will say um, there has been an excessive amount of accidents at the intersection on 138, which is not too far from the facility. So I'm thinking from a traffic standpoint, although he said that there will be no bearing on the traffic coming in and out of there, 
Um, if we're talking five times the amount of cars at eight o'clock in the morning when most people would drop their dogs off, I can see um, issues from a traffic standpoint moving forward. Just an idea that I, that came to me while he was presenting his case. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brown, like the color. <laughs> and, and that special permit is, is 40. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Chairman, members of the board. Um, my name is Holly Brooks. I'm actually the landlord at 795 Washington Street along with my brother and sister. Um, I think the, the important thing for me here is to, to bring it back to that this is a commercial property. Um, and so the, the residents that do live next door bought when this was a commercial property. It has been a commercial property. It's been in my family. Um, we're next door, but the family business has been, um, you know, we're in our third generation. Um, and so it's always been a commercial property next door. Um, we were happy to be able to acquire the property prior to us applying for this permit to allow Classy to go across um, there. It was a facility of children, which we just heard some complaints who were outside at 8 p.m. Um, the, the reason for some of the rules that were being put in place for Classy Canine was to prevent the noise at night. Um, if somebody is sleeping with their window open at night, um, Classy, that shouldn't be a problem because the dogs are inside at that point in time because it's you know, 7 p.m. or 6.30, whatever the board decides in terms of the operating hours, um, you know, they, that person should be able to open their windows. Um, I also just wanted to point out, um, I looked at the um, abutters that submitted um, their, um, I guess, their, that they weren't in support of moving over. And just to clarify, of that list we went through, um, there were people that were uh, co-existing in units that were part of that. So of the 64 abutters, it really, it wasn't, all 64 that had um, come against this petition, um, only 28% of the abutters uh, were valid uh, people that were not against this um, petition that was put that's being put in front of you. I think um, the the other thing, again, just to reiterate, they've the um, our our tenant has been working with the town of Easton as well, and as we know with COVID and the number of people that have made a purchase for dogs, there is a need in Easton for people to put those dogs in, in, a, in a safe place. And they're doing their best also to help where, unfortunately, there's been people that have put in positions that have let their dogs go stray. And so again, Classy is also helping the town of Easton in terms of taking in those animals that otherwise wouldn't have a place to go um, and you know could be walking on the property and be a danger to the resident there. So they're doing their part with the environment um, and I think, again, like I, I where we, my grandparents came and started a business in Easton, and here we are, third generation. I don't want to prohibit a small business from growing. Um, they came, they've been a tenant for us for 17 years. So, again, I think we need to keep our eye on the fact that this is a commercial business. It feels like the residents may not necessarily be happy with another business, any business that goes in there, um, that potentially. Uh, they can pick holes at what that business's is operations are. So, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I just want to add something. Um, my name is Cheryl Yodlin, and I live at Six Janet, Unit Five. Um, as far as um, I think they said at seven p.m. it would be closing or people not dropping off, but I can attest to. They, I don't know what you call them, they board them. I can hear them at two o'clock in the morning. They are barking and keeping me awake. I know I'm sounding redundant, but in the location that they're at, I can hear that. They're gonna be in my face when they move into evolution. We're right, we abut it. So I can't stress enough that it's just going to be too loud, and it's going to be intolerable. And the other thing, too, is trying to get out of our driveway right now is hot enough in the morning. Lots of traffic. When you start adding in more, when people are dropping off at 8 o'clock in the morning, it's just going to be really tough to get out of there. So basically. Um, you know, I have nothing against business or development or something, but that is not the right place. They're going to be right on top of us, and it's going to bring the value down, obviously. 
So that's all I have to say. Very good. Thank you. Can I make a Go ahead. So I just want to rebut a couple things that the uh, uh, landlord spoke of is, is absolutely not 28% of the abutting uh, buildings. I have, and I emailed to the board, a list, yes. And all those people are legitimately live there, so it's uh, high 90s, it is not 28%. And she's correct, yes, we did purchase or choose to move in with a, that being a business, but what business was it? It wasn't a dog kennel. That's the difference, thank you. If that's enough, wrap it up for the uh, public comments. Someone want to make a motion? To, oh, yeah, go ahead. Why did he get comments? Well, I mean, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, all right, Jean, you want to start? I have a couple of questions. Is that appropriate? Yeah, no, because I, I, I have a number of questions myself. Oh, thank you. Is, yeah. is that okay for me yes, to start? Yes, please. Um, just, um, thank you very much. And do, through you, or do I? No, nope, you can address them directly. Um, I have a, a question about um, the lighting. Perhaps it could be addressed by engineering. It was raised by some of the folks in the audience. Uh, what is the current proposed? It's not indicated on the plans what the proposed lighting is, and is it? Does it operate twenty four seven? Are the lights always on? I know this is sort of a multi part question, but it's relating to the right lighting. Uh, we don't have any additional lights uh, proposed. What's there now is is what's going to uh, what's going to remain. There'll be building lights uh, to light the uh, the entrances, and then the what's there currently uh, for the parking lot will remain. How about for the how about for the outdoor play area existing uh, existing area for the dogs? So the dogs not out allowed. The dogs out. aren't out at night. I think the the hours were mentioned to be. Seven so, to seven, whatever it is. So the dogs won't be out at night. Six, so there's no after reason six thirty, the light. dogs are not allowed outside. Is Correct. that what I understand? Correct. So will those lights, uh, are the lights that you're mentioning being on this building? are not the lights that the neighbors are complaining about. Is that correct? That's from 795 Washington Street? I believe Street? so, yes. Um, is there any, uh, OK. In terms of the indoor area, is there any indoor play area? You've got indoor training, but is there any, any thought that the dogs play also inside? Is the training area also a play area? That I couldn't answer. I'm not. I'm not sure exactly. Yes, there are. There are indoor areas. In terms of the waste, um, has there been any discussion? You said the waste is going to be picked up in compost. Um, not excuse me, not composted, but put in, in bags, plastic bags, and put in a dumpster. Is the dumpster in? I, I believe that it was the. Conservation Commissioner, Environmental uh, Enforcement, that had questions about the w planning oh, for waste needed. and composting. Is, sure. the, is it does it meet the the bylaws in terms of the it, distance from any water source? It, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know that there is a, a bylaw from a from a wetland to to the waste, but it, it meets all of the the town's requirements, and it's uh, it's the same process that they use currently in their existing building. As far as bagging it and putting it in a dumpster and having it having it picked up, so it, it's it's the same process. Okay, I have a question on the existing special permit that was in our packet. There was one from 2006. Um, this existing special permit has been amended. Is that do I understand that to have been correct? Correct. They added um, an overnight uh, component because the initial the initial permit said no overnight dogs. Right. So they added 25. And, overnight. and that was in 2007? Yeah, about a year after they got the Okay, and these, was that also a five-year special permit? Five-year special yes, permit? Yes, the first mean? permit was a five-year permit. Okay. The, uh, I don't believe it was. Um, I just I wondered if it had been sure. renewed, if, if, the, if the special permit had been renewed um, on a... I just didn't, I, I don't see the second one. I don't know if the subsequent permit was renewed, required to be renewed a, sure. um, on that five-year term. And if not, why not?
I don't see any indication that it was in, in here that it was five years. Do you have a copy that? Uh, yeah, I don't, the, I don't have a copy. Sure, yeah. It, I, I apologize. I'll just submit it. I saw the five years. Mr. Chair, is it, do they have to be renewed every five years? Or is it five years? Well, their, their initial to... permit said uh, item number eight. Um, under the uh, board's decision, a special permit shall be valid for a term of five years. But that's a term that they have to, the applicant has to. Well, to me, it's, it's unclear is it the applicant, is the applicant's okay. job to approach the town for a renewal or is the town's job to approach the applicant for a renewal? I, I always read it as a, it's their permit to act on this, to go ahead and make the count on it. If you don't do anything, let's say you get the approval and then you decide to put. Don't do anything with it. Then well, it we, we don't, expires, we don't, and then some new owner would have to apply for the same thing. Yeah, but thing. Well, we don't. We don't generally. Uh, I've been the board for twelve years, and uh, I've never uh, had a permit uh, have a term, an expiration term in it. So, um, I would take that as a literal. It's good for five years, and someone had not had a requirement to renew it. So there is no, and, and do we have an answer yet on whether or not the subsequent <clears throat> permit was had a, it had a limit? It doesn't contain that language, no. No. In the, um, I, just a couple more questions. Thank you. Sure. Uh, you ha you're going from 40 to propose 200 dogs. And I think, I wonder if you could speak a, a little more, just a, a little more in depth about the notion of traffic. I think one of the commenters uh, did did mention something, you know, you do address the fact that you seem to have ample parking based on the bylaw. However, we are talking about a, a five-fold increase of the number of dogs. Would they be, are, are we anticipating that they would be picked up at opening and closed, closed down at the end of the day, just like a, maybe an elementary school or something? That sure, it's so not going to be spread out necessarily across, across the day. So my question is, if I could get it out, is... Um, that's my fault, not yours, is what is the, on, on what basis do you determine that there's no impact on, or, mi or minimal in, impact on traffic if you've got to, I'm a, assuming a dog a car? Sure, I can, if it pleases the chair, I could just ask the tenant just to speak to when people are coming in and out. Yep, that's fine. Just to... So people... Will you please come oh, yeah, up sorry. to the microphone so that the public can hear you? Hi, my name is Robert Catogio at 61 Wilson Street with a tenant at Classy Canines. Um, people come all throughout the day. There's not really a specific time to pick up um, or drop off. We offer half days, so morning, afternoon, and also at nighttime. The training goes on all throughout the day, um, some in the morning, some in the afternoon. So mm -hmm. there's, it's really it is kind of spread out throughout the entire day as far as traffic. Okay, um, thank you. And uh, perhaps one last one. In, in terms of this, the notion of public welfare here, uh, you mentioned that there's a need, obviously, and in Easton, do you have a sense of, of what percentage of the uh, clients will be Easton residents? Uh, again, I, if I could ask um, the, the tenant, he's just going to have that. I don't have those specifics. Hi, Robert Cotogio again. Um, sorry, what was, the, what was the question? Just uh, there was a general statement in the beginning that this is somehow for the public good, and I think that that would be an important consideration in a special permit application. Sure. Do you have a sense? that is somehow Easton needs this, but do, how do we know what percentage now do you have, for example, of what percentage of the clientele are Eastern, Easton residents? I don't know an exact percentage, but I can say a lot of our clients are from Easton or very close by. Um, we do a lot of work with the town of Easton it's in, in its own. Um, a lot of the first responders use us, um, you know, medical people and all that stuff that work 24 hours, last minute boardings, things like that. Um, a lot of us, a lot of neighbors close by us um, use us. Our, our radius is really only 10 miles anyways, so that we would travel and stuff. So right, right in around, you know, I would say 40 to 50% of our business would be directly through Easton right now. Thank you. 
And um, I did remember one, one more, sorry, okay. Mr. Chairman, um, that it, just from an engineering standpoint, has there been consideration for uh, building out the interior spaces with some kind of sound, sound mitigation? Has there been a, cons what's been done in the consideration of noise? Dogs are inside and I think neighbors were t testifying that they could hear them. Uh, at this point, no, we haven't done any sound studies or anything to that effect. Uh, in, the, in the areas that the dogs would be kept inside. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you. Great. Mr. Hamburger. Um, I've got a couple of questions also. Uh, how big is the building? Oh, I can get that for you. Uh, about 14,000 square feet. And if, so that's about 70 feet per dog, if I can do the math in my sure. head. Sounds right. Is, is that appropriate? For, is, is there any standards for how much running area a dog needs uh, inside? Are they in cages during at night? Or? Again, I think we're going to ask the prospective tenant to come back up. If that's okay, Mr. That's Chair. fine. Hi, Robert Patojo. <laughs> you asked if the dogs are in cages at night? Yes. Yes, they are. They're all in their own individual cages, and they're absolutely up to code to make sure that they have each dog, depending on its size, have enough room to adequately move around and be comfortable overnight. And they're in, uh, inside from sundown to sunup? Yes, when we close at 6.30, they come inside. Um, at that point, we do have staff inside still keeping an eye on them and cleaning and stuff. And like they mentioned, sometimes there'll be a, a client that needs to come a little later just to pick up. Um, but otherwise, the dogs don't go out after that. Okay. And there's about uh, 75 overnight that you're expecting? Yes, right around there. So that'd be about 125 daily drop-offs? Depending on the stays. Some dogs stay for a week. Some dogs stay for a night, depending. Uh, you know, I'm assuming For the sure. daily would be, you know, be the remainder of them if, at full occupancy. Yes. Uh, so that would be, you know, that comes out to, you know, per day, 250 cars coming and going, uh, plus 20 grooming, there's another 40. I'm just wondering if this is enough to make an I impact on the traffic. I'm not really qualified to speak on the traffic stuff. Neither am I. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. I think I'm all, all set, set for now. Ms. McCall? Uh, currently, it's this build out in here hasn't been done yet, correct? Correct. Because right, before, it was, what, an athletic training facility, so it was pretty much wide open, like an open area. I believe so, yes. And this outdoor play area, has any thought been given to any kind of fencing? Because right now, I think it's chain link fence with uh, blacked out uh, fabric or something that I've seen when I drive by there. Because clearly, the biggest complaint overwhelmingly is a noise issue. You're going from 40 to 200. You're sliding the facility down about 300 feet closer. And... Um, and I'd like to see some sort of, you know, where you can help ensure that while there, you know, not to say that nobody would ever hear a dog bark, but can we <clears throat> to go to this kind of an increase, some sort of mitigation, uh, you know, what kind of uh, <clears throat> exterior, you know, I'm not in construction, but the drywall, will it, you know, is it going to be steel building, that type of thing. I don't know what's going to be in there, what they have planned. Are these going to be full walls? Are there going to be pony walls? I mean, anything to, uh, I mean, that's your biggest hurdle to me, along with the traffic concerns. Just such a large increase of uh, dogs, which, you know, credit to your business. You're successful and you're trying to grow it. I get it. But you get a lot of people right there that this is going to affect. So if I could get more information on that at some point, that's my only question, really. Right. Was that a question or a statement? A statement question. I mean, I don't okay. see anything in here telling me what, you know, and I think of some sort of fencing for the outside has to be, 
you know, considered in the plans at least. You know, she could potentially have 40 dogs running around at, you know, in shifts of 30 or 40, you know, big dogs together and that sort of thing. <clears throat> A chain link fence I don't think is adequate enough for me anyways. Sure. But, I want to say, yeah, there's, we've, uh, I mean, I, I can have Mr. Bowen speak to it, but I believe, yeah, as the owner, that they would be open to, I'm not an expert on barking mitigation, but some sort of sound mitigation. Um, if you don't mind, I get Mr. Bowen to come up, and he's just a little more knowledge on that process, Mr. Chair. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Just... I don't want to commit. No, <laughs> it's, 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 no, no I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Pat Follin again. Um, the existing structure is a, a steel truss structure uh, with the outside walls are about eight inches thick, corrugated steel panels on the outside, insulation on the inside. On the inside of the warehouse currently, it's uh, half inch plywood because of the, the play balls that were in there before. Uh, so that's a pretty sound, the atten attenuation of that, uh, that build out is actually quite quiet. You could probably have a concert in there and you wouldn't hear it. I don't think the issue will be the inside. Um, as far as the uh, build out, you're correct. Most of those facilities are in there the, where the grooming will be, the restrooms, the lobby, some of the, um, the break room, all that's already there. There will be a little couple changes, but some of the partitions in the, in the area to, to separate the dogs would have to be, um, would have to be done. Again, I think, you know, as far as the build out inside, um, I don't think that would be the, the, the concern for noise. I think we would be uh, amenable to taking a look at some type of sound attenuation. I know there was a comment that it just wouldn't work. Um, that's what they're, they're there for. You know, you see like highway barriers and so on and so forth. So I think there, we could do some uh, investigation into that if the board chooses. So thank you. Right, Mr. Vice Chair, you got anything? Uh, yes, I have a couple of questions. Um, getting back to the front of the plan, that open area, um, I believe you told uh, Mr. McCall that right now that fence is a chain of fence. Uh, I believe it is a chain link fence now, yes. Okay. Yep. But you're not entirely sure. No, Mr. It's Fulham. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Fulham confirmed okay. it's. Um, okay. And um, what's the height of the fence? I believe it's a six foot fence. Six foot. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. It's eight foot fence, sorry. And um, in response to one of the earlier questions, sound studies um, has there been any effort made to determine what can be done in that outdoor area to uh, mitigate noise that you're prepared to say based on this study or based on this engineer's recommendation or based on something that you could uh, put in place something that would uh, dampen the noise from the barking dogs because clearly from the comments that we've heard, that's a very uh, big concern. Understood, yeah. We, we haven't had a study done on the noise. Um, when we got the comments uh, this afternoon, that's when we had some discussions about some sort of noise mitigation on the exterior, um, I guess play area or training area. But um, we haven't had any sort of study done you know, I, I just be honest, discussions we had today. Um, some, some suggestions on what might work as a, a way to mitigate the damp in the sun. And, and if I understood what you said at the beginning of the presentation, that open area is <laughs> um, designed for, if that's the proper term, uh, for 50 to 60 dogs to be outside? Correct. And that's more than the number of dogs that you have your housing and the uh, old premise. Correct. Um, and in, in your brief, uh, Attorney Castleman, you went over the factors that were to take into consideration in uh, passing on this or deciding. Um, factor six. You've identified potential fiscal impact, including impact on town services, tax base, and employment, taking into account any proposed mitigation. Uh, what you did say there in response was that the, uh, 
the dog kennel business will generate additional revenue for the town. Um, how is this this um, new business going to generate additional revenue for the town? Well, it's do taxes. You mean the tax on the building? The building, the business, sure. The building's being taxed right now, is it not? It is, but there's going to be improvements, so I would assume there would be, you know, potential increase in the um, in the value. In the, in the assessed yeah. value. And the improvements being the, what you uh, proposed doing to the assessed <coughs> building? Yes, and then the, the, I guess we call it the play area, or the any potential fences, or... And other than perhaps increased uh, tax assessment, is there any other way that you believe that it would bring additional revenue to the town? Well, if it bring additional revenue, necessarily, um, I think through you know employment, there could be additional people that are not working in the town. Um, there's more people coming into the town um, around that area, going to the businesses, making purchases, et cetera. And forgive me if I'm repeating something that was asked earlier. There was that comment from the, uh, the Board of Health on the current uh, septic design. Um, if, if you could go back over that a little bit more slowly. Because I, oh, sure. Maybe uh, just, I can hit that one. Well, I'm going to let the engineer speak to it a little. Sure. Uh, uh, Fair enough. Yeah. I, I was looking at you, I should have done it. Sure. <laughs> nope, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, again, the, there's a, a Title V inspection that was done uh, at the time of the, of the closing uh, just a year ago, May of 22, <clears throat> that, uh, that sizes the system. The, the Board of Health's comment about the 300 gallons a day, that was the proposed design flow for the previous, uh, the previous tenant. They would need 300 gallons a day. The system itself has a capacity of 2,200 gallons a day. Uh, no different than you know your house. If you have three people, that's 300 gallons a day. But your system might be designed for 600 gallons a day. So there's a, a little bit of a difference between the 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 proposed use for that particular client, that particular uh, occupant, as opposed to the the system itself. So the system is designed for 2,200 gallons per day, uh, and then Title V. Has requirements, uh, you know, that's specific to this use. So we would have to fit under uh, under that under that use. I'm sorry, I, I missed that last part. But so Title Five says you're allowed 50 gallons per day per kennel, is what they say. So um, no, and kennel being the entire. When you say kennel, you're talking about one dog and a crate, or are you talking about the overall? The overall. So there's more than enough uh, capacity with the existing system. Again, it, it's two separate systems in that front parking lot. It's 2,200 gallons a day. Uh, even added uh, the office staff that would be that would be there. That would also need some flow. The the septic system is is. Uh, yeah, is over designed at, the, at this point. The comment talks about the current septic system can only support six kennels of 50 gallons. Based on the, the 300 <coughs> gallons per day that they plucked out of the, the ah, old permit. I see. So 300 divided by uh, by the 50, 50 is, is comes to six, right? As opposed to the 220, uh, okay. the 2200. I'm sorry, the 2200 gallons per day that the system actually has a capacity for. All right. Um, <coughs> and I guess lastly, when again getting back to the comments, the planning and zoning board indicated that um, they weren't going to provide uh, a comment um, and with, on your proposal, say, and, and 
saying, quote, sufficient information to where the merits of the proposed use was not provided. Was any indication given at the time that you made, you made a presentation there of what information they required? No, I, I, don't, I don't know what other information they would require. Except that we didn't make a, person, a formal presentation in front of them. The plans of- I understand. Right. right. They, they don't just look at pieces of paper and, right. and just come up with their content. You, you were there making the presentation. No, that's what I'm saying. There was no formal, we, did, we didn't have a formal presentation before the planning and zoning oh, board just because there's no permit required through them. So I, I think the way it works, we just submit the plans, it gets distributed to each of the departments in that particular case, the board. The board brings it <coughs> themselves under other business and, and uh, discusses it amongst themselves, but we were not present for that. Fair enough. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay, I guess that just leaves me. Um, and everyone stole my thunder. Um, uh, uh, Attorney Casavant, the, uh, the, the letter that accompanied did, doesn't mention anywhere boarding uh, in there. Only the plans mention boarding. So when I was going through uh, and going through everything, you know, I was surprised to see boarding in there because it wasn't mentioned anywhere. Um, Oh, for the for the request for the yeah the overnights yeah that that's just an oversight on my part okay um you know the total dog is what they were looking for a portion of them mm -hmm. um potentially would be asked to increase that twenty five number to um we've got set sixty okay I don't have any other questions Mr. Chairman may I ask one more yeah um your your would you explain who's spending is, do you have employees who are spending the night while these dogs are being boarded and how many and where on the plan are the employees spending the night? I would, I would again have to ask the, uh, the, the business owner. I, I don't know the answer to that question. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> there are any. Hi, Robert Pitoggio. Um, so we do have staff there. There's, right now we have one, but it would probably be two at this facility. Um, they're just there mostly cleaning. They let the dogs sleep at night, but they are there and it's on site just in case um, anything was to happen. But they're moving around working throughout the day until we open back up. First person comes in at 5.30. Again, the dogs don't go out, but there's always people there. So for, for 60, the 60 dogs, it's one or two people that would be there? Each dog is in their own respective cuppy fully locked away though, yes. And where the employees sleep? Do they, they don't sleep, they're working throughout yeah, the day. third shift. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Okay, it's the third shift. Okay. Um, thank you, and while you're there, um, do you, do you uh, currently have a kennel license? Yes. Through the town, and you update that every year annually? Yes. Okay, thank you, no further questions. Good. Public comments are over. Um, so, Councillor, that there are a couple questions that, you know, I, I don't know, you know, how the board would vote right now, but that there seem that there are a couple open questions where I think it'd be uh, very challenging for us to come to a decision. Uh, so, did did you or your client want to try and get that information? Some of those clarifying questions as far as noise, uh, maybe information on light, lighting, etc. Uh, to better inform us to make a decision, or do you, or would you want, do you want to roll the dice? I, I, my suggestion would be, you know, there's a lot of good feedback here, so for us to kind of process this, I think, um, obviously, you know, there's been a lot about noise, mm. a lot about traffic, so. Um, so do you want to? Potentially continue. I would suggest it continues. So if I could just ask Mr. Fallon, just my client, if um, would you be? Yes, would you like a continuance, or would you like? Yeah, to... if we could just get the specific questions. So it's just so we're not wasting anyone's time. So exactly the, the issue of the. Right? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, it's just, and your voice carries, but know, yeah, let's <laughs> let's make sure um, the public can hear. It. I didn't mean to, uh, Mr. Chairman, reach out before when they were talking, but just so you know about the light question, I can I can we can further answer that. But there was a special permit on this property um, in 2011 that a previous owner had done. Uh, we're not making any changes to the lighting situation on this current building. Um, I will be looking into our building as I heard a concern about some of the lighting on our building, and I don't want that to be a concern for them. So that's a separate issue. But um, so there will be no changes to the lighting. 
And then if I could just make one comment about the, where the dumpster is located, that's designed on the plan as well um, by the Conservation Commission. That's an agreed spot where that location will be. So I just want to touch on that as well. But if, if um, I think we could have a continuance, I'd rather be uh, um, answer everybody's questions in, 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 you know, in full and, and take everyone's uh, feedback uh, constructively. Um, and then you know, we could present again if we need to. As yeah, so as I, I think the questions are specifically geared towards noise. Mm -hmm. So some sort of noise study and then some sort of traffic study. Uh, so we can be better informed, potentially allay any, any fears of the, of the uh, abutting neighbors. Um, and I think that pretty much those are the two, I think, open concerns so we those had. Those are the most pressing issues yeah. by far, especially the noise. Yeah. If some sort of engineered solution would be beneficial. OK, yes. fair enough. Uh, so do you want to pick a date? When is our next? November. Uh, we don't have anything on the calendar for November 14th right of now. November. So next do, do, is that enough time? Sure. Or December 12th. Yeah, I think we can we can shoot for November 14th. I think we should Okay, be able so to get it's six, 635 on November 14th. Sure. Yeah. Pressure's good. Oh, I'm not that it matters. I'm not available. Okay. Um, we would still have we would still have a quorum. It'd need all all four um, for it to work. So do you want to stick with the 14th or do you want to wait till December 12th? Your your call. It's up to you. I am I am fine with the um, with the fourteenth. That's fine. If if the twelfth. The twelfth. Yeah. Let's, let's not rush anything. Let's make sure we do everything. You want to do December twelfth? Okay. So then. The yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I guess December twelfth, and that way. Um, okay. Is, is there anything on the docket yeah. for twelve? Okay. So six thirty-five <laughs> on December twelfth. We'll continue to. You need a motion. Motion to continue. Hearing till December 12th, 6.35 p.m. All right, Mr. McCall made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. And um, any discussion? No. Seeing none, uh, all those in favor? Uh, yeah, we'll just do it by hand vote. So that's a 5-0 to, um, to continue. So I guess we'll, we'll see you back here in December. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. You Thank bet. Thank you, boys. Appreciate your time. Yep. Thank you, everyone, Thanks. for coming and appreciate for coming. Appreciate the comments and helps out. Right. What do we get? Oh, the sign. <clears throat> yep, you bet. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did that. I don't know how well that worked. They came in here, and I thought we were as as important as the uh, as the uh, select board. Right. We're not. No, well, no 150 million dollar proposals, so uh, apparently not. Yeah. All right. Read this in, Mr. Chair. Or I'm sorry. To, want me to read this in, or you want to wait? A well, second? I'm going to let the noise clear out a little bit. Gotcha. I mean, it was bad enough listening to the vacuum. I had a hard time here in uh, Attorney Casavant. Yep. Okay, so I think uh, I think we're ready. So, Ms. McCall, you wanna wanna read our next applicant under the record, please? Yes. Uh, Eastern Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October twenty fourth, two thousand and twenty three, at six thirty five p.m. at the Eastern Town Hall, Colleen Corona Boardroom, one thirty six Elm Street, Easton. On the following petition. Variance ID Sign Group Inc. on behalf of Fernandez Lubber for property located at 299 Depot Street, Easton, Mass. Assessor's Map 38U, Lot 68. For variance pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Subsection 10. And Easton Code Book Chapter 235 Zoning, Section 235-29, Subsection D, Subsection 2. Applicant seeks permission to install Two double-sided side panels to be added to an existing pylon sign on the property. This notice is available at masspubliknotices.org. The following comments. DPW, Police Department, Board of Health, Environmental Planner, Affordable Housing Trust, Historical Commission, all not applicable. Building Department, status recommended.
Planning and Zoning also recommend with the following comment, October 2nd, 2023, Planning and Zoning Board discuss a variance application submitted by the proposed sign at 299 Depot Street and voted unanimously to recommend the application. That's it. Fantastic. Is the applicant present? Please have a seat. Present. Where the heck did everyone go? I know. You thought you were popular. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, you, you're sitting. Thank you. See, that's why she's, that's why Suzanne's the best. On top All of right, it. so sitting on this hearing this evening, uh, myself, uh, Mr. McCall, uh, Mr. Kay, you're on this one. You're on this one, John? All right, Mr. Curran, and then Mr. Hanberger. I made sure I yes. did that while Suzanne wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, Suzanne, so we read out, and it's everyone but Ms. Rummel. I do? Okay. Ready when you are, sir. Good to go. Thank you. My name is Jamie Fisher. I'm with the ID Sign Group located at 9 Bristol Drive, Southeastern Massachusetts. Um, and I'm here on behalf of Fernandes uh, Lumber Services. Our applicant seeks relief in the form of two additional PVC panel signs, both non illuminated, equal to an additional 18 square feet of signage per side. Right now, they currently have. 51.13 total square feet. And as mentioned, we're looking to increase that by 18.22 square feet, bringing the new total to 69.35 square feet per side. I currently, the way that I interpret the current bylaws suggests that there are, are a total of 100 square feet uh, per side, um, which conflicts a little bit with uh, a message that I had received through the application uh, platform. Um, one freestanding sign uh, per street frontage up to a maximum of 100 square feet per single or double occupancy building um, it isn't allowed. Permittable sign according to section 235-29D, uh, subsection 2. And then if you go on to read through the bylaws, I, I get a little bit confused because in general provisions, uh, section I, section one, uh, it, it goes on to state that a sign with two or more faces, the area of all faces should be included in determining the area, except where the two faces are placed back to back. Uh, this would be a circumstance where the faces are placed back to back, no greater than two feet. Um, so I'm a bit unclear in my own personal interpretation. Um, it, it, and my understanding is that we would no longer be exceeding the allotted square footage. We would actually fall beneath the maximum allotted square footage if I'm interpreting the bylaws correctly. That's your whole presentation. Uh, I think so. <laughs> Is there, should I? Should well, it seemed like it was open, like you were waiting for a response. Yeah, nope. Uh, I think that's, that's about it. If there are questions in, in terms of specifics as to how these signs are manufactured, um, where they'll be located or oriented in the field, as you can see, uh, here are the renderings and blueprints above. Um, and that is how they are proposed to be installed in the field, um, consistent with all of the handouts that I've provided. Um, and one thing to note is that the existing blue rhino propane hanging sh uh, shield sign will be removed and replaced with the two um, that we're seeking relief upon. All right. 
Uh, are there any members of the public who are who wish to comment? No. Okay. Well, Mr. McCall, I'm going to start on your end this time. Uh, I'm uh, in favor of this, so I'm not. I don't really have any questions. Okay. No questions. Questions. No questions. I'm afraid I have questions. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're not on this. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I have no questions. Uh, so I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close. All right. Second. Very good. Uh, motion by Mr. Call, seconded by Mr. Mr. Curran. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two, three, four, five, oh. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. And so, just wait, well, we're, we're going to deliberate now. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Yes. I got you. Susan, do you need? No, I, I, yeah, it was just to close. Okay. Um, okay. So any deliberation at this point? No, no, just in favor. Okay, so we want to make a motion then. Uh, yeah. I'd like to make a motion to approve the applicant's uh, request for the additional panel size. Mr. Carr, you want to back him up on that one? Yes. Okay, just making sure. This seems to be your <laughs> thing tonight. Um, seconded by Mr. Curran. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? That is a 5 0. Wonderful. So, Thank you. So, my question still remains in, in my interpretation of the bylaws uh, for professional development as a, you know, as a business acting in Easton. I, I want to make sure that I'm clear with my understanding as well. Um, the notation on the application suggests that there's a maximum of 100 square feet, 50 per side. However, my interpretation suggests that it would be 100 per side of pylon panel mm -hmm. because these signs aren't back greater back. than two feet. Yeah, and I, I didn't under, really understand the question. So, so we're here filing for a special variance because we're suggestively exceeding 50 per square feet. Is it not 100 is allowed per side, not 50? As long as the signs are back to back. Correct. So your interpretation is the way that I read it. <coughs> Which would suggest that this you, was you not didn't, a necessary. Didn't really, I, I don't think you needed to, but you know, the, the uh, zoning enforcement officer has the right that, that they're unclear to send this to the board for review. Um, okay. and, and that's, that's what, that's what uh, he exercised. Okay, so it is of your opinion that in the future, you are allowed 100 square feet per side of sign, mm -hmm. equaling a total of 200 square feet. Okay, great. Yeah. Helps to know. So, so, so the way, in, in the so future, way I read it. Yeah, I have the ability to potentially contest that, uh, thus saving my client, you know, valuable time and money. In, in the end, the challenge, you can contest it, but the zoning enforcement officer has the right to say they're not... That, uh, in the yeah. case he, you know, he's not going to make that call that he wants you to go to the zoning board for. Gotcha. Relief. So yeah, you know, I just like that, to that, communicate that, this that's, back to my client, sure. so that they're aware of you know how it all washed out in the end. Mm -hmm. Sure, but I mean, if you end up with a different chair and a different board, they could interpret it differently. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, so it's subject to interpretation of uh, the. Current. Every, everything is subject. That's what keeps attorneys employed, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, it is, and uh, until it's on the last. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah you're, so you're all set. So um, uh, Suzanne will, will take care of that. Send it over to me for review, and yeah, you know, I'm sure within the next next couple of days, you know, I have that all squared. No rush. Thank you. I appreciate. Right. I appreciate the explanation. All right. All right, so one more to go. Thank you. Thanks again. All right, you. have a nice night. All right, Mr. McCall, whenever you're ready. All right. Eastern Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October 24th, 2023 at 6.40 p.m. The Eastern Town Hall, Colleen Corona Boardroom, 136 Elm Street, Eastern Mass, on the following petition. Variance, JGI Realty Trust for 
Property located at 68 Prospect Street, Eastern Mass, Assessor's Map 16R, Lot 42, for a variance pursuant to Eastern Code, Code Book Chapters 235 Zoning, Section 235-17A, to allow less than a 40-foot building separation. This notice is also available at masspubliknotices.org. The following comments. Police, affordable housing, historical commission, and board of health are all now not applicable. Building department gave it a complete status. And then the comment was building has no issue, but curious why fire wasn't asked to weigh in. Environmental planner, not applicable. Fire department, I guess they did weigh in. They said recommend. And planning and zoning, recommend. And the following comment, October 16th, 2023, the planning and zoning board discussed a variance application submitted for 68 Prospect Street and voted 4-0 to recommend the application. Okay. Yeah. Gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Deja vu. Yes. Uh, Timothy Duffy for the applicant, JGI Realty Trust. I have with me the trustee, Joseph Ritchie, and uh, John Moynihan, the operating manager of the golf course. And yes, we are back. We were here in uh, July for a special permit for the construction of a 2,900 square foot building. Uh, that permit was allowed, and uh, the Planning Board did a site plan review in which they placed a comment in their approval of the site plan that the zoning enforcement officer <laughs> shall weigh in on uh, section two, I'm sorry, chapter 235, section 17A, the 40 foot separation of buildings. Uh, so he sent a letter to the general contractor indicating that he would not approve the permit, in fact, would deny the building permit as there was not a variance issued for the 40-foot separation of the buildings. I had a long conversation with the uh, zoning enforcement officer and explained that we went the route of the special permit as my reading of the town bylaw did not apply to our particular situation, particularly uh, sections 21 and 22 with respect to variances and specifically structural variances that it talks about uh, reconstruction, addition, extension, alteration, extension of an exterior uh, wall. And there's nothing in the bylaw, uh, the sections 21 and 22 with respect to variance or the definitions in the bylaw about new construction, which is what we're doing. Uh, I further explained that the application was clear that we were requesting a special permit for the construction of a 2,900 square foot building uh, right alongside the existing retail building that the decision from this board uh, specifically stated that's what we were applying for and that uh, further ruling of this board was that the uh, building was shall be constructed and the site developed shall be developed pursuant to the plan provided. Um, his comment to me was based on the fact that the planning board said that he shall enforce that particular provision if he refused to issue the permit without a variance of the, the appropriate uh, section of the bylaw. So we're here this evening. I've amended my brief to include the issues with respect to uh, soil conditions, site conditions. When we were here previously, the, the board all seemed to be quite familiar with this site, the golf course, which is crisscrossed with streams, ponds, wetland protected areas. Uh, the structure is located in the only place it could be placed outside of the uh, appropriate wetland protection buffers. Uh, any other location would require significant infrastructure. There are possibly a few locations that would still be in an upland area, but they'd be at the far end of the course near the, the green for hole two or the tee box for hole three, which would require removal of vegetation and trees and access and infrastructure across wetland and, uh, you know, roads and what have you to get back there, which is not only financially uh, a hardship on the applicant, but would, you know, cause significantly more environmental damage to the wetlands that are, that are currently there. 
So uh, in terms of the other criteria required, we've already addressed those in the special permit. I'm happy to get into those if need be, but I would rely upon my brief and answer any questions that the board might have. Okay, so sitting on this hearing, I didn't go over that, so uh, Mr. Call, Mr. Curran, Mr. K, Mr. Hanberger, and myself. Um, Mr. Hanberger, I'll allow you to go first. Mm. The separation they're requesting is from your building to your new building? Correct. Under the town bylaw, there's a provision that uh, any accessory structure needs to be 40 feet away from any other structure on the property. This I didn't address that because we did in the special permit, but this is a residentially zoned area. This is a golf course operating in a residential zoned area, so that's the residential requirement under the current building bylaw and, and zoning bylaw uh, that the structures be 40 feet apart. And as the, uh, the, uh, the building inspector indicated, it, it's waived all the time for two and three car garages and, and other issues, but mm. he would not issue this particular building permit without the variance being granted, uh, saying that while your decision said what it did, it did not specifically indicate that we were able to build this building within 40 feet. Now I'm done. Hey, Mr. K. I don't, I don't have any questions. Mr. Curran? Um, I guess just one. So in other words, everything's the same today as it was back in July, except for the fact that we have this issue of there is one slight change in that the roadway going up to the parking lot, the planning board required that that be moved. They were looking for us to move the building itself, which was not possible because of the proximity to the existing structure. So where this corner right here was so close to the roadway, they asked that we move it really a matter of inches. So we, we are planning to move the roadway up to the upper parking lot by less than a foot just to get it further away from the building. Other than that, the, the building's not moving. Everything that you've already voted on is, is the same as it was. Right. So the only thing we have to vote on is the 40 foot. Correct. Um, thank you. I have no questions. Well, we're changing it from a special permit to a variance, correct? Well, we're not we're changing. Both. The special yeah, permit yeah. Is, is for the use. The variance is for the, the enforcement setback. of the, uh, the you know, setbacks, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. I don't have any other questions. So what what is between the buildings? The like, space? Yeah. So in the front, it's two feet, four inches. In the back, it's four feet, five inches. And what's going to be between there? Just air. Correct. Yeah. And I think there's going to be some drainage along the ground. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't have anything else. Um, any? I'm, I'm assuming, sir, you're here to support them? I am. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I'll entertain a motion to uh, close the public hearing. So moved. Mr. McCall. Mr. Carr. Yeah, nice. Now I just get a head nod. I don't even get a. That's fantastic. Uh, any discussion? Uh, seeing none, vote by hand is fine. That is 5 0. Okay. Deliberate. I um, think we've approved the project before. I'm in favor of it. Um, the fact that they're in a residential area is the only reason why they'd be here. And also, as Mr. Duffy alluded to, the environmental concerns all over the place have just become quite expensive and to be a lot of damage to the environment to do it any other way. So I, I'm in favor of this and that's it. Um, so we'll remember that, uh, you know, I always want to make sure we step through the standards sure. uh, one piece at a time. So uh, special circumstances related to the soil condition, shape, or topography of such land or structure. I think I mentioned uh, that. I'd okay. say that there is. Uh, yeah. And you've discussed that as well, uh, counselors, saying basically even look at some other places to put it, and you're down by the uh, second hole or third tee box, and uh, wetlands and trees, et cetera, need to come right. down. It will also have a much more significant impact on those neighbors. They're much closer to the course than where all of this infrastructure is already. But, uh, plus, I, I would think that would also have an economic impact because it wouldn't be as easy to access the building, and people probably be like, Nah, it's not that important. Well, it would also require one of the numerous wetland crossings that are already on the property for the golf carts would have to be beefed up to handle road traffic. We'd have to have cars going up there. You'd have to put electric and water lines. All it, it'd be. Yeah, it would make. Yeah, right. All right. So, 
Uh, a little interpretation of the provision of the bylaw would involve substantial hardship, financial otherwise, which we just discussed. And uh, desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. There's no one here from the public to oppose this. Um, so I would think we would uh, yeah, be well I, within our bounds. Not uh, to interrupt you, but this board and the planning board have also indicated that this project does not have any detrimental impact on oh, the neighborhood. Uh, and, right. right. So. Uh, so well within our bounds on that. Um, All right. So if someone wants to make a, a motion. That's right. I make a motion to approve the applicant's application for a variance. I'll say. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we have a motion on the floor. Mr. McCall seconded um, by Mr. Curran. Any discussion? And the, and the discussion is to approve uh, the variance as proposed. Uh, seeing none, uh, why don't we take a hand vote? All those in favor? All those opposed? That is a 5 0. And um, you know how to take care of the paperwork with Suzanne. Thank you. All right. All right. Appreciate it. All right, so we have uh, some just regular business stuff. Uh, uh, we got the September meeting minutes. Signatures. Yeah. Everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Yeah. These are for the. Uh... No, that's fine. Votes? Huh? Are you going to take a vote on the minutes? Oh, wait, yeah, yeah just. Uh, uh, well, I mean, well, I was just. Yeah, well, that, that'll be after, but right, right now we're, we're dealing with the, uh, the meeting minutes of September. Okay. Uh, so, do we have any comments on the meeting minutes of September? I don't have any. I don't have any. Okay. None. Okay, great. Sorry. That's okay. I'm going to abstain because that gonna... wasn't here. Okay, very good. Um, I, I don't have any comments, so I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve the minutes uh, for second. September uh, 12th. Sorry. I'll second. All right. I, th I didn't know if you guys were going to try and change it up and you make the motion. <laughs> <laughs> nice I got gotcha. you. Know, I got gotcha. you. In a groove. Picture the catcher. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, so uh, motion approved by Mr. Co uh, McCall, seconded by Mr. Curran. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll just take a hand vote. All those in favor? That is uh, four, O oh, and one abstention. You can vote on minutes if you don't attend a meeting, I've been told. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Learn something new every day. Would you, would you like a fifth vote? But, well, it's a matter of, I mean. I just want for the few days you need it for it. No, we don't. We have, we have four, so that's an no. approval. In the past, I, I've missed meetings and then voted to approve the minutes. Right. Okay. Just going so, you, so you mean you watched the meeting watched. and then compared <laughs> notes? <laughs> that's okay. a volunteer. That's, that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So that's uh, four zero and one. Any other items? No, do we have signatures to? You have to adjourn. Yeah. So adjourn I'll first. Oh, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. McCall. Oh, Mr. Current. Thank you. <laughs> We're perfect tonight. Um, no discussion. No. All those in favor? That is a five zero plus one. Thank you, everyone. Don't forget to turn off your microphones.